happy to announce that I passed the bar delighted to announce that I passed the bar. I know you've heard this so many times on LinkedIn and I just want to share what I believe is a secret behind a lot of those success stories because it's really the secret behind mine. As you know and as I've shared on this channel, I passed the bar with over 300 points and that's thanks to Themis Bar. Thank you Themis for sponsoring this episode and please consider Themis Bar for any of your bar prep needs today. You've probably heard that the California bar exam is one of the hardest exams in the U.S. But in this episode, I'm going to be interviewing Apurva. Apurva is a California and an Indian licensed attorney currently working for the firm McNeil, Trop and Brown. Apurva was an LLM student at Penn State University. As a matter of fact, she was a merit scholar from Pennsylvania State University. In this episode, she's going to share everything you need to know about writing that exam. She's going to share how, the cost, how to prepare, you know, what the exam day looks like. Everything you need to know about that exam is going to be shared on this episode. And so I hope that you can stick to the end so that you make an informed decision. It goes to what I always say. You can't just write a bar exam because everybody's writing it. You can't write New York exam because everybody's writing the New York bar. You have to make sure it's a strategic decision. And so we're going to learn why someone who was at Penn State University wrote the California bar exam. And I hope it's helpful to you. So, hi everyone. Um, thank you so much for um, joining today's episode on US LLM tips. Um, and today we have someone very special. I have with me Apuva. Apuva, if you want to say hi, you can. But in hi. this episode, <laughs> so but in this episode, we will be talking about um, the California bar and everything that has to do with the California bar. I don't know if any of you have attempted it, but I feel like it's very important to make your choice of writing the bar is very important and has to be very strategic, right? And so we see a lot of LLM students writing the New York bar, but it's not the only bar. There is the Texas bar and all the other bars, right? And so today we're going to talk to somebody who passed the California bar, an LLM student. And so we're going to know why, what was the reason for her choice? How much did it cost and does it have any value? Right. So thank you so much, Apuba. I'm really, really, you know, I'm really grateful. And thank you so much for doing this. So we're going to jump right into our questions. So I guess I, I, my first question would be along the lines of why, you know, let's let's understand your why. Right. Why did you decide to write the California bar in a country like the U.S. where most LLM students write the New York bar? What was your decision? Why, why did you do that? Um, so it's uh, after my LLM, I started working as a law clerk in California. That's where I got an opportunity. So California bar just came naturally to me. So you, it, it's human nature to tend to stay where you are. Mm. So since I was based out of here, it, every everyone I met, everyone I spoke to, all the attorneys at my office, everybody's talking about California bar and you know what what it entails and you know how you can um, continue your career after passing the bar so that's something which 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 was you know I, I heard day in and day out so it just basically came naturally to me it, it's also there's one more reason that like um, when I when I was uh, talking to some of the mentors or I, I was talking to people around who are attempting to give any sort of bar there's this uh, I observed this general hesitation and fear amongst a lot of people which against California bar and everybody's like oh don't even try because it's so exactly <laughs> it's so difficult that you might you know not end up passing it and also um, so you know I took it as a challenge and I, I was like you know I found myself on the other side one day mm -hmm. so so let me let me make sure I'm getting you right. The fact that you were in California played a great role in you making yes, that decision. It does. So when I I did my masters from Penn State, and um, when I was there, I was inclined towards giving the New York bar, but you know because it's closer. You you are aware about the kind of opportunities in Pennsylvania or the East Coast. So where you are and where you are, you know where you want to stay long term plays uh, plays a significant role in what bar you would choose so that's that's probably why california was to me okay that makes sense so yeah i think you've answered that question very quickly right so i think 
the next question I will ask would be, you know, just in as many words as you can, mm -hmm. tell us about the application process. How much did it cost? Like, just take us through that process for you as an LLM student all the way from India, you know, that did an LLM here in the U.S. What did the application process look like for you? How much did it cost? And then I would ask you more questions along the way within those lines. Right. So the the as mentioned in the California bar website as well. So the basic requirement for eligibility as an LLM student is, you know, having a Juris Doctor degree, which has been awarded and awarded and approved by uh, the American Bar Association. It has been accredited by that. So that's something which is the beginning point. So if you have a JD from the US or from some other country, which which you know which is accredited that's all uh, you know academically that's all you need to sit for the bar to be eligible for the bar but yes during the process for the for the california bar exam process there are there are a little there's there are tiny things more which you need to keep in mind so one is that of course it's the obvious you have to pass the california bar i think we, which is the toughest of all the requirements needed <laughs> the other one is that you have to receive a positive uh, moral character determination which is basically like a process where you send send in that that uh, a positive affirmation form to a couple of lawyers who are working with you who know you who can you know vouch for your credibility and moral ethic manner and uh, the last one would be to pass the MPRE, which is the multi-state professional responsibility exam. And that's that's one requirement, which is which is which is for all the uh, state bars uh, across the U.S. So those are the uh, that's the application process. In all, but just how it varies is that for California, the cutoff might be a little bit higher than what uh, is the cutoff? <laughs> Tell us that right away. I think. Um, it's uh, for MPRE, the California cutoff is the highest. I think it's 86. It's the minimum is 86 that you need to get. And for California bar exam, at my time when I gave, it was uh, 1390 out of a 2000 wow. score, which is uh, a little bit higher than mm. New York or uh, probably the UB uh, jurisdictions. So it's <laughs> okay. so that's on the high side so mm -hmm. let me ask you a question right while you were applying these are a couple of questions that i have was your master was your llm degree required for the application process to for california? So how it works in california i can tell of for california you don't you don't require an llm degree to sit for the bar exam if you have a accredited jd degree from your um if from your home country whatever that is and you and you fulfill the other criteria, which is the bar exam and pre and positive moral character affirmation that's all you need mm -hmm. you don't need a llm degree to, to pass or sit for the bar but i i believe that that's not the case for every state i you have cleared the new york bar you know better about that yeah so, yeah yeah you know um, some states have different requirements i was talking to someone who i believe for maryland they had to um you either have you need a master of law degree or you need to have taken some classes to be able to write the brand so that's why i say it's important like for me one of the reasons i chose new york was that the state where I was in Washington at the time required me to take some more classes and that was going to mean more money and more yeah. money I couldn't afford at the time, right? So New York looked like the most affordable option to me at the right. time. Okay, right. another question I have for you is, was a license from your country required? So I know you're already licensed to practice in India. Yeah. Was that something that was also required for the California bar? Yes, so the the way that I applied for uh, for the California bar is a foreign attorney applicant. Good. So Good. since I was licensed there, that's that's the way I entered in for the California bar. So uh, it's a little bit different in terms of fee. Like a fee for the foreign applicant is different from a fee who is like who has done a JD and who's not licensed in their country or any other jurisdiction in the US. So that's that's like a minor distinction but yes it it does matter at the end of the day so okay so yeah let's talk about money how much did it cost <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, 
it's it, it's an expensive exam and uh, i i also feel that a lot of people do account for the cost of uh, probably the exam but they do not account the cost of the preparation so when they are making their budget i like i highly recommend them to consider that as well so the just the cost of exam should cross something more than $1000 mm. and then if you take a bar prep or if you buy some books be be it like used books or be it book borrow books from some person who's already cleared the bar um but that also should is is a substantial amount of money that you would have to put in for the prep because bar books and bar prep in general it's like expensive and mm-hmm. the more fancier bar prep you take and the most the ones which are like known the best mm-hmm. are like they really could give you a reward by you know the fact that they are good but then it is expensive so that's something which sometimes people do not take into account when they are calculating how much money is required to be invested in the exam to you know get a positive result it's it's yeah. a little bit on the higher side yeah I, i think that's a good point you know so so that's why i always say as usual like that this is a very strategic decision to make and i feel like even the earlier you make the decision the better so if you know you're planning on coming to the us and you know that you're going to do an llm and you know that you're going to write the bar one thing you can start doing now is factoring to your budget how much is it going to cost me to write this bar like for people like me i didn't think i was going to write the bar so it was at a time when i realized oh i think i'm going to write the bar that i had to start figuring out how was i going to pay for it and it was quite expensive like you said so yeah, yeah thank you for taking us through that i think that's very helpful um so let's talk about how you prepared for that exam because i feel like you know <laughs> that is where like all the questions should you know go in like what did you do how did you prepare for the exam what bar prep portal did you use you know i know we've talked to um about this for a while but you know for somebody who has not you know who is considering think and thinking about writing the california bar exam what should they be thinking about now how do they plan their lives how do they prepare so um all my answers would be as a as an llm student sitting for the yeah. bar it mm-hmm. it it might vary a little bit from uh, a someone who's done their jd here i can't speak for them but were as an llm student I, so let's start with the bar prep i i used themis bar prep as uh, uh, oh uh, as my primary source of uh, preparation and uh, uh <laughs> in terms of in terms of you know the work that needs to be put in so since i was then i was I, i didn't do my jd from here so what i was recommended by my mentors was that it probably you can put in a little bit more time to the prep and because you you must be you must have heard that like the regular time for preparation for bar exam is somewhere close to like you know 8 to 12 weeks so they start probably 3 months before the exam and then you know study completely for 3 months and write the exam i think that's not the best way to go about as as an llm so i studied for approximately 6 months so which is approximately double the time that compared to a jd and uh, in terms of uh, challenges that i faced while preparing for the exam the i think the biggest challenge is a challenge which i faced was uh, working full time when i'm studying for the bar wow that is that is really uh, challenging like you and and the place where i was working that was like full time in person so, you know you get up you pack your lunch you go you work there for 8 hours you come back and then you start studying so it's it basically when you do it for many many months it takes a toll on you and you can burn out and it, it's it's hectic and also that's one and second is that because we are especially me because i'm staying away from home so i'm not in my comfort zone so there are some things which come to you really easily when you're staying at home when your mom is there and you know you get food taken care of you you know those are like really tiny things mm. but when you have to do that on your own when you're on a time crunch those are really big things so you what you do is you end up eating out or you end up ordering or you take you know 
getting a takeout or something that's also like one that's unhealthy you know eating out for such so such a long time and uh so that's expensive that's expensive yeah right that is and continuously i i used to continuously like order food because i i don't have time to cook and to study some change anything if you are preparing for a you don't know relatively difficult exam in another country you can't change anything but you can if you're aware about this you can be well prepared and you know you know what's to come you can engage into something like meal prep and all that so that you know one part of your problem is sorted out yeah. so that's something which uh, everyone if everyone should consider before you know jumping into this into the pool where you can like really drown <laughs> yeah that's very interesting and and this is just a random question that came to me now so and if you don't have any answer to it that's fine but mm-hmm. as um as someone who uses themis how do you think themis prepared you for the exam so mm-hmm. i think themis what did you what were the things you did with themis that you think you know was helpful or not so i think themis is i would say it's a bar prep in moderation i would say mm-hmm. it's not too fancy it doesn't tell you so many things that that you don't need to know right so it tells you straight to the point exactly amount of things which would which are required for you to know to pass and we, which i feel is a very clean way to approach the exam because the content of the exam is is so much that you, you unless like you're a genius or something you cannot understand or you cannot mug up or you cannot just capture or have expertise in everything so i feel you know that the piecemeal approach of okay this is a topic and w- what is highly likely to come is the thing which you want to approach the first thing mm. yeah it's it's clean you know the most most probably this would come so let's attack that and let's let's get an expertise on that and then if you have time and if you have the energy and you if you want to go into details okay let's attack the the things which are you know peripheral but then i can't be an ex- expert of like all 14 subjects and try to try to be the best at that no i i need to clear the exam so mm. one of the most important things which one one someone should understand it is one challenge regarding the content and then there's other challenge regarding how do you crack exams like these so i think a lot of people are working really hard i'm sure they are working as hard as me or as you or as anyone who's cleared the bar but it's really it's like it's like ext- i can't stress how important it is to understand like you know what they want to know from me like what are they asking in this question it's so it's so important because otherwise i've seen i've seen like people who have been attempting california bar for like years and years and it's their fifth attempt 10th attempt like it they're just going down 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 it's and it's like really demotivating and it's it's really and it's so expensive that it to pay their fees every time so i really and i really stress upon the fact that you know go deep down in the fact that what, what is this this exam wanting to test in you and you know pay attention there otherwise it's an endless job you'll never be able to you know um so interesting i think that's that was my experience too with the new york bar right it's not really about how much law you know it's a very strategic it's mm-hmm. almost like carrying out a like a surgery you need yeah. to know what you need to know and that's it you yeah. don't need to know too much the moment you know too much you're failing the exam yeah. you know <laughs> the moment you know too much you're going to waste too much time thinking you're going to start overthinking the exam and that's it you mm-hmm. failed it and and also one more thing which i learned through preparing for this exam and after passing this exam is that i can't stress how important it is for someone to trust their gut oh it is everything like when you're doing your mbes which are the multiple uh, multiple choice questions the f- the thing which really comes up the first is is it 
you know it's only when you th- start overthinking and you're like oh but but maybe it's this you the know, moment you do when, that yeah that's that's when you go wrong you read something you should have confidence that much confidence in yourself that i am well prepared so as soon as i read a question the the thing which comes to me the first i have to you know i have to listen to myself and i have to take that answer yes there can be exceptions to this because you know some questions can be particularly tricky and they they really do not want you to go with your gut i understand but like but from it cannot be the case for all 200 multiple choice so you have to trust your gut that you know what i'm thinking what my what my preparation has been for the last 6 months i am going to go with that answer this is the moment you start questioning yourself it's it's the downhill from there <laughs> so did you spend more time reading and studying the videos or did you spend more time practicing questions what i I, i would say like i think 40% time in studying what it is because the content is so much that you know get to get it, get yourself familiarized with the content itself is a matter of like you know two months or three months but i think the key is uh practice oh yeah you practice so much you do every question available on this planet <laughs> you should have them. yeah that's the only way there's no other way if you've seen and if you've read every question that that there is available and it has gone from your eyes once at as a mock or as you know you're just flipping page or something it it will help you because there are only so many questions available So just do yourself a favor work harder than you think and then so there are only certain things they they want you to ask but they are so smart they just you know they tweak the questions but a lot of questions boils down to the same answer that's what they want you to know so recognizing a fact pattern only comes when you when you've gone through so many fact patterns that it just becomes mechanical after one point oh this this is the answer do am i perfect with that concept or is there no other person who knows that better better than me no not at all there there must be hundreds but i know the answer and that's what that's the approach you need to you know check the box that's all you need you don't need to be a genius you need don't need to score like 2000 out of 2000 you just need to score 39 that's it mm. so that's, a, good one, that's yeah. a very good one you don't need to score 2000 nobody you don't get extra money for scoring 2000 you know when you pass the exam they don't even tell you the score so i don't know i i scored like 1391 or 2000 i don't no, know they don't tell you the score no they do Yeah, you in New York, you get a, you get a, a, your score point. They don't. I'll tell you why. Because it's, it's a UBE jurisdiction, and you need to know your score yes, because so you have to right. transfer. Yes. So California is it's on its own. It, it's not UBE. It, you know. So it, they don't even tell you their score. I don't know how much oh, I really really? score. I know I passed, but I was was I the last of the lot or <laughs> topped? I don't know. But it doesn't matter because you passed. Yeah. yeah, that's the only good thing that it doesn't matter. But then sometimes it makes me curious that oh my god, I really want to know how I did. You know? But wow, wow. that's very so interesting. When you do not like what, what if you if you're unsuccessful in your attempt they do tell you your score of course because they want to let you know why you were unsuccessful what area or you know was it the MBEs or essays or the CBD where did you lack but uh, once you pass you you know that's, that's interesting wow. that's very interesting um <laughs> all right another question that we have and I think this is very important for folks is what is the structure of the exam what can people expect on the exam day so um it's a in general it's like a two day exam comprising of a total of 12.5 hours and it has three sections similar to the first section is similar to any exam in the country which is the mbe which is the multiple choice questions the second is the essay portion and the third is the cpt so um the first day it's it's the essay day 
you get five essays and one cpt which you have to do in what is a cpt can you explain for folks who don't know what the cpt means can you so explain? it's it's basically they give you a hypothetical which which would be uh, of a court room or something related to the legal industry and they ask you to write your opinion on it you know as as one of the attorneys or as you know a, a judge or you're writing a letter to a court defendant or you're writing a letter to the plaintiff's counsel so some task which which, which you would for sure do when you really become an attorney so it's basically writing a legal document mm-hmm. to do in future so they give you a set of facts a uh, hypothetical facts and then they give you you know you have to write a motion or a letter or something so that that is included in the essay portion so there there will be five essays which which would be out of the 14 subjects which are part of the exam and then one cpt that's on day 1 which com- which comprises of 6 and a half hours and the second day is purely multiple choice questions 200 questions 6 hours okay <laughs> 200 questions <laughs> the same thing yeah we are expecting the same thing in new york right Um, yeah. so I guess what is do you know anything, and you don't need to have an, any answer to this. I just put it in case you know. Do you know what the pass rates are? Is that information that is available to you? I don't think. So I think the pass rates are decent in California with respect to um see the data I feel the data which is available on the internet when you write pass rate California but I think the data primarily consists of applicants who are who have done their jd from us so right so yeah. but i feel the pass rates of those students versus the pass rates of llm students is a completely different ball game <laughs> i i mean it's very unfortunate that like a lot of my batchmates have tried and attempted to sit for the california bar but they have been un- unsuccessful unsuccessful now and i'm sure they'll pass in future but it's it's really harder for llm students to sit for the bar so uh, i wouldn't like really rely on the on the pass rates which google is telling because you know that is not weighted that is just like you know everyone included you know 30% or 40% people pass but like how many llms pass it's way less than that that's good to know that's very interesting hmm Okay. I guess the next question we we'll, I'll ask is did writing the California about open up job opportunities for you in the US do you think it was it's helped so far? I think uh, the answer would be yes. Uh, it does open a lot of opportunities if you're not licensed in any state like forget california in any state there's only so much you can be and there's only so much you can do, do, you can rise in what you're doing like you can work as a legal assist, uh, assistant or consultant or a law clerk but i think uh, passing the bar has opened a lot of doors for me and in general everyone because you can work as an attorney and that's that's mostly why people write the bar to do so Um, I didn't I guess one other question that I'm sorry a couple of questions has coming up are coming up for me as I'm asking you right is but did it in any way make your job search easier or had you already gotten a job before you you were qualified to write um before you passed the bar so I you know I've I've heard some people who I've spoken to folks who will say oh even though I wrote the bar it was still a bit difficult for me to, i got a job but it was difficult for me to get the job was that your experience or the the moment you wrote the bar boom jobs came knocking at the door for you <laughs> no i i um so was it difficult yes but everything is relative it's easier to find a job as an attorney versus a, as a law clerk or paralegal comparatively it got easier but mm-hmm. independently is it a smooth process like i applied and i got it tomorrow and third day i joined no it's not easy but yeah relatively your job search your opportunities mm-hmm. and you know uh, uh it, they they increase because a lot a lot of firms have a lot of attorneys but not those many law clerks like you know there might be like two or three or four attorneys and they have an assistant or they have a law clerk and so the the ratio is different so i think the number of job job opportunities yes did increase after the fact like when that i get the bar or something so that's that got more okay 
Yeah, I think that's a that's a good a good answer to that question. My next question would be: Can you provide any advice to LLM students thinking of what bar exam to write? Right, right. So I'm sure a lot of people are. Oh yeah, what should I write? I'm going to write New York because everyone is thinking of New York. So what do you think are the considerations, or and what advice do you have for anybody, any LLM student thinking of what bar exam should I write? So I think. Um, um... If I would have to do it again, I would do the same thing because I would think long term where I want to stay in, like you know, ten years from now, twenty years from now, and also the there's one more consideration which I will take in a, into account is that it also depends on the field of law. Hmm. So if you're doing something related to M and A or business or infra or something like that, New York is a big market. It's it's a big market for arbitration as well. Mm-hmm. So if you are doing that, most of the opportunities, or many opportunities in the finance sector, finance and legal sector, are in the East Coast. So it's it, it's a strategically good decision to give the exam of New York or New Jersey or, or somewhere in the East Coast. So every state or every you know major metropolitan has its own advantage or disadvantage so that's also one thing which you can consider like california has a you know very decent uh, arbitration culture and that's really booming or something and that's that's something which i do and i want to do in future as well so california that way also was a strategic move for me also Uh, some people take into consideration their where their family is located so they want to be close or there are some people who do not like the east coast weather because it's snowy so they want to live live long term where it's warm texas cali so there are many many considerations which take which can be taken into account it really depends on what is very important to you so, so that's there but i think uh, field of law should really be taken in consideration because you want to be happy at your job and you want yeah. to have a lot of opportunities where you are licensed to so that's that's, a good one. Yeah. that's a good one. I suppose to just writing it in new york because oh, everyone yeah. is writing it there oh let me just write it there you know no, so i think the herd mentality sometimes hurts yep. because hurts. your friend might be writing in the new york bar because he wants to be in the you know uh, in in some industry which is prevalent there but that might not be the case for you so instead of thinking about it or instead of regretting the fact that oh i have worked so hard but i should have worked this hard in an area where i could grow so instead of thinking about this later it's best to think it now that you know why i am choosing a jurisdiction is is important hmm Okay, I think we are almost at the final tail end of this episode, right? And and so my last question will really be, what preparation tips do you have for folks looking to write the exam in July, which is this July or even next year? In, I don't know how how often is it written? Twice a year? Twice a year. Once. Oh, oh, oh Vicky balloons. <laughs> <laughs> so it's twice a year. Once in Feb and once in July. Um. So my advice would be. uh start early that's 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 very important for you to take control of where you're going especially as an llm student it does take time it does take time to familiarize yourself with subjects it gets overwhelming at one point and next it would be like you know you create a schedule try to stick to it as much as possible it get it can get hard and you know you might take a couple of days off and that all that is understandable but um try to try to be honest to, you, to yourself is the most important thing if you do not understand a question just just don't flip it that oh no i'll deal with it later just really go in, go inside it because that's that's the most important thing because that will come up at some point again and you will get stuck and you will get the wrong answer again again which that's is true. which is basically cheating yourself and that won't work mm. so that's something be honest with yourself in the prep and and everything else will work out but like and like a lot of months of hard work is required so you know build stamina be kind to people around you who are you know helping you in this journey and you know so that's that's my advice thank you so much apu i really really appreciate you and i appreciate this time 
please everyone look forward to our next episode where we will talk about Apuba's time at, as a merit scholar in Penn State University. Look forward to that. But thank you so much for joining us. We really, really appreciate you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks for having me, Aisha.